Na 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 to Dixon Politics. This is episode 12. We have the OG crew with us today. We've got me, Samantha. Me, Adriana. And me, Hannah. And Hannah is coming to us from down in Florida. You are, first of all, like, and I said this in the last episode, your apartment, I'm very jealous. How is everything going? Are you settled or do you still have a lot of work you want to do? I am almost unpacked. I am waiting on a bookshelf. It should be here somewhere. I don't know. I got to find it after this. But nice. yeah, I'm basically unpacked. Good. Well, I'm glad that you're down there and that you're in the nice, warm, beautiful weather because we're oh up here freezing. Oh my God. Freezing. It was 78 today, so I'm really oh, sorry, well. guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's eight degrees here. Yay. Yeah, and apparently it feels like nine below. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a really special episode for everyone. Um, we have a lot on this episode, actually. So we do have a small announcement. Hannah is going to be leading our celebrity and pop culture segment going forward called Hashtag Hashtag. So this is her first day leading it. We know she's ready. She's got this. Hannah, you got this, right? I, I think so. I think I got it. Perfect. And then afterwards, we have a really special interview. Um, and it's going to be sort of part of like, it's kind of like Endgame, but I guess this would fall under the segment of, so what are we? We are going to be welcoming Grace to the show, who is a professional matchmaker and a self-proclaimed serial dater here in New York City. She's made a career out of really getting to know people on a deep psychological level to help them, first of all, find themselves and then find their perfect mate. So it's going to be a packed episode. Stick with us. Without further ado, let's get into our first segment. Hashtag, hashtag. Okay, guys, so I don't know if you guys heard about Jesse Smollett and how he was attacked by two men who were shouting racial and homophobic slurs. Um, He recently, you know, came out making a statement. They say that the security footage didn't show anything except him appearing in the lobby. He had rope around his neck, but he didn't report it to the security officers in his building. He waited till later uh, when a friend came over. He's been cooperating with police. They've asked him to see their messages, their text messages. Um, they haven't gotten them yet. What do you guys think? Oh, my That's terrible. God. It's like, I just feel, again, like, three steps forward and five steps back. It, 2017, 2018, and now going into 2019, it, being really conscientious of racially charged hate crimes and homophobia and all all these other awful discriminatory things that happen. I really thought that maybe we were headed in a good direction and then something like this happens and it's like, why? I don't understand. This was outside while he was walking somewhere or was it an event? Where was this? I think it was just... It was just outside of his apartment building. Yeah, he was just trying to go home or something. Like a subway or something. Do you think those people knew who he was beforehand? Um, I don't know. I... I I hate to like speculate on stuff like this because I can't, I have a hard time putting my mind inside the mind of a violent person because I'm not a violent person, but I would say probably, yeah. Um, Yeah, I I can't do that either. Um, Like just see how they would see it. But I mean, I can't imagine some random person going up to someone and assuming that they're gay and just attacking them. Exactly. So I feel like, they Thanks. must, yeah, they must have yeah. known him from, t- I mean, he's, at this point, Empire's a pretty big show. I feel like he's a pretty well-known person. He's got his own music career. He's been yeah. performing on his own. So I think he is, you know, well-known enough that they probably knew who he was. Um, but, like, why knock someone down for their sexual orientation? Like, you know what? If you want to go after someone and say, hey, you're a freaking asshole, go after someone who's a pedophile. Like, go after a murderer. Don't go after someone who's like, hey, I am a man and I love other men. They're just um, living their lives. Th- yeah, exactly. Like, who cares? Doesn't affect you. you I don't like to say who cares, but like, doesn't affect it doesn't you, affect so you. Why exactly. You? Yeah. Sorry, Hannah, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I just wanted to say, I mean, obviously, he's an affluent gay black man. And he's openly gay, so I wonder, you know, there's obviously a group of people in this 
country and in this world that are not okay with that and feel some type of way. And I think, you know, unfortunately, we have to deal with people in, in this world like that. So it's sad. It's really sad. I, you know, again, you hope that things will get better and then something like this happens. And it just, it makes me feel so awful because I think, especially for all three of us, we have so many friends that are in the LGBTQ plus community. We are, I mean, like I'm Asian, you're Puerto Rican, Adriana, like our friends are all extremely diverse. Um, And I hate that you know, people have to sort of look over their shoulder when they leave their home or when they go somewhere. That makes me really sad. Oh my gosh. And you know what else I heard about relating to that is Kevin Hart had been asked about it and, you know, he kind of gave his sentiments to Jesse and, you know, said that he felt bad for him and he got a whole slew of hate messages. Uh, like, yeah. This poor guy, he can't win. Like he apologizes for this tweet that he put out there years ago. He's not doing the Oscars. He's going to step down. And now when he tries to like be supportive and do something right, people kind of. It's just you know, like, and I think this is why, you know, the three of us, especially we're freaking out before we announced like so the reason why and we said this a couple episodes ago I think it was those season one wrap it was Mm -hmm. Adriana and Corbin and myself and we were talking about how all of us all the hosts were feeling really really anxious the moment we realized that like we knew that we were going to have some sort of visibility and we were all sharing sort of what that felt like and how it made us feel because it was you Adriana that said it like you just can't win no you, you can't. literally cannot win I mean, whatever happened to forgiving people for their mis- mistakes especially if they're trying to better themselves exactly them here's this wonderful young man who is so talented he's on a top show like freaking empire I mean come on and all he wanted to do was say hey you know what I felt like letting everyone know I'm gay all right great back to work and just because he's gay and because he's a minority, you know, but in this case, we'll just say that it was because he's, well, actually, no, they did do racial slurs too, didn't mm-hmm. they? Okay, yeah. so because he's black and gay, and let me ask you something, and this goes to the listeners. Do you guys have any idea what it feels like to be attacked? Do you know what that does to you? I know what that feels like. That's something that sticks with you forever. It changes the way you walk. It changes the way you stand in the line at the grocery store. It changes the way you dress. It changes the way you interact with people because you're, constantly either in fear or have somewhere in the back of your mind that someone is going to come along and attack you without any warning and for what you to perceive and for what you perceive to be no reason at all. I really hope out of all of this, first of all, I love the support that he's getting. I think that's really great. I think I, I'm pleased to see that people are speaking out and sending him love and thinking of him. But most of all, I hope that this doesn't change him too much. I hope that he will continue to live a life of ambition and truth with a lot of happiness and success because you can't let assholes like that get you down. Well, we we wish him the best. I think we can all agree on that. So Hannah, was there anything this week that was happy? Yeah, let's get to a lighter note now. Um, So have you guys heard Ariana Grande's new song, Seven Rings? That music video. I mean, Adriana, you texted it to us and you're like, this just slapped me. Yeah, I was like, (laughs) yeah, I I just said, this video just slapped me. And she's like, what? And you click on it and you're like, oh, I see what you're saying. It's a great video. I mean, what do you guys think about her being at Coachella? Um, I I know a few people. Interesting. Yeah, I know a few exactly. people who go to Coachella, um, you know, or have been frequently, and it's not necessarily. I mean, they said they would still go because they know there'll be other, you know, music artists and things. That right. it's the experience, really. You know, it's not necessarily who's there, but at the same time, it was like a kind of a sellout move. I think. Yeah, I have a hipster opinion because I know that when Coachella Are you first. A hipster? No, but I'm a very <laughs> alternative music kind of person, okay. and. I know Coachella used to be alternative bands, and some were no names, like only underground people maybe, mm-hmm. and it's just turned into almost 100% mainstream, Yeah. And so the crowd is so different, and it's like, ugh, people like me, I mean, just, we don't even have any interest in going anymore. I, you I would think- pay me. Go to yeah. a festival. I definitely agree that it's mainstream. I think they set it off by uh, having Beyonce last year, and you know, mm. it's been there this year by Ariana Grande. So, well, 
we'll see how it goes. Does she fit in with Coachella and what it sort of stands for or used to stand for anyway? No. <laughs> no. No. But you know what? Look, look at MTV. MTV used to be all about music and now it's like Teen Mom and Real World and this, that, and the other. Whatever. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. And oh, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's going to, you know what I mean? I'm sure she'll sell tickets. People are going to go see her, but I just think like, I don't know. I guess I I guess music festivals like that tend to like. I think her fans are just, point. you know what it is, Hannah? Like, I think it's that like Ariana Grande's fans are just very different from the typical Coachella crowd. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. It'll be interesting to see them meshing with all these other people. <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to be broke as hell after spending a million dollars on tickets singing Seven Rings. Like, I got it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, that <laughs> is a festival you could pay me to go to. I'm just, I don't know. Like, Hannah, remember when you were like, I might go to Burning Man. Do you want to come? I'm like, yeah. Uh, no. You couldn't pay me. Too hot to go. I can't do it. I was no fine. Like being in the desert for that long, I just I felt like, how do you? There's no escape. Well, all the best of luck to her. I'm really interested to see all of Ariana Grande's fans mixing with the Coachella people. But something else happened just outside of Ariana Grande's world. Um, Hannah, what the hell is going on with Pete Davidson? Pete Davidson and Kate Beckinsale were spotted out together with doing some PDA, and I guess they might be dating now. How the hell did that happen? I always want someone to be happy, but I really, I want to be sure that I'm being careful with the way that I say this. Wasn't he just only a few weeks ago going on social media, making really, really startling statements about how he wanted to end his life? And now here we are. He does seem really like, I I don't know, like, is it, he's like, seems like codependent. Like he always wants to be yeah, in a relationship. Right. It's been like two seconds since him and Ariana broke up, but right. maybe that's just my opinion. Just like Jesse and just like Ariana Grande. And we just want him to be happy. Jason, I want you to be happy. We wish them all the best. And, you know, we'll just have to kind of see what, what comes next. But all right. So, while we're talking about love and relationships, getting it right, but also getting it horribly, horribly wrong, I hope you both join me in welcoming Grace to the podcast. She is a professional matchmaker. She is a serial, a self-proclaimed serial dater. She has done it all. She's seen it all. She's lived it. And she's here to talk about how you can really find yourself in order to help you find the perfect mate. So let's go right into our next segment, which we have not done in a long time. So, like, what are we? Adriana, we are on a roll. First, we had Darren Karp from... Bravo. Then we had Dana Powell from... Modern Family. Who is now our colleague and co-worker. Then, last week, we had the women from Flourish Media join us, and now... I am so excited to introduce you to my new friend, Grace. You haven't met her yet, but we have her on the show. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Grace. Aw, oh, thank you. That was such a nice, warm welcome. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you, and I would love for you to take a minute and tell everyone who you are, what's the name of your company, where are you based out of, and then what exactly do you and your partner, Rachel, do? All right, well, I'll start from the top. Um, the name of my company is A Good First Date and we are based in New York City. We are a date coaching and online dating consultation business. And basically, in a nutshell, what it means is we wanna help single people figure out why they're single and we want to help them to get unsingle. Um, as we're working with people, we found that most people are single because they're just getting in their own way. And I know a lot of people would blame it on demographics and, and other factors like that. But for the people that we're working with that want to find a real relationship, um, you know, it really is more about focusing on what they're looking for and who they are and how to get there. Um, Absolutely. I would agree with that completely. And I I love that you're here, Grace, because dating, especially dating 
uh, in New York City is something that's been a really big focus of this podcast because what we found very early on when we started ideating around what our different segments would be, the first one that came up was dating. And mm-hmm. we felt that there was this huge divide between what people were looking for and what they were actually finding. And we set out to figure out what the hell. Well, I noticed that a lot of the guys were just wanting women to be themselves. Yeah. But, like, Grace, so tacking off of that, why do you think it is, and let's not just say women, let's say everyone, yeah. What? why have you found it's so hard for us to just be our genuine selves? Is it a communication issue? Is it, like, a self-reflection issue? What do you think is causing that? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think that there are two things at work here. One of them is, you know, when this plays out in the online dating space, is people don't really know who they are. And I don't mean that in like a weird esoteric way. I mean it in the sense of they don't really know how to highlight the things that are important to them and important for other people to know about. One example is a client that I was working with. Um, Obviously her details, I'm going to skew a little bit, you know, to protect her privacy. But Mm -hmm. um, basically she was just this like badass entrepreneur who goes all around the world is sand sandboards snowboards um loves heavy metal but if you saw her she was just like the most normal like beautiful normal looking girl and mm-hmm. her dating profile had all these pictures of her like in miami or like by the beach or whatever at a party and when i was looking through her profile i was just i was like wait anybody could take these pictures but what about pictures of you you know, in Dubai, in the Middle East, or in Asia, or, you know, at, in these different um, situations that only you could have been in. Her profile reflected what she thought people would like, like what she thought men would like, but they weren't really speaking to what made her so awesome. And so when you talked about why is it hard for people to be authentic, they're not really in touch with what makes them awesome. So another example is of a woman that I worked with. Um, you know, when I knew her, I just knew her as a mom and um, not very much else. And when we started talking, it turns out that she's just like this huge movie buff. She goes to all the film festivals. She does all this research on the film. She knows the directors. You know, she just she has so much knowledge and the way that she approaches film is so interesting and so, you know, reflects her curiosity. And that's one thing that makes her an amazing person and could make her an amazing partner. But on her dating profile, again, it was like picture at the beach. I like red wine or whatever it is. And so that guy out there who might share the same interests as her is just is not picking up on that. Got and it. so, yeah. So just to that point of, you know, like not knowing who you are and wanting to reflect that in a way that's it's really important. That's something we help people do. You know, and the other thing I think that's coming out is people don't really how can I say this? People want to have a certain type of relationship let's call it like a long-term committed um, relationship but as they're going through the dating process as they're becoming more jaded they are acting like it's not really possible to have that relationship so what I mean by that is specifically and this kind of happens at that seventh eighth date mark oh yeah things (laughs) things are vibing you know you've gotten those first dates you like each other yeah we Um, talk about the dating timeline yeah, you know, it's it's fresh and it's exciting, um, but there's a point at which people become very uncomfortable asking what's going on and making it clear what they want, mm-hmm. and so then they can't kind of fall into this funk of, I think we're dating, or we might not be dating, I don't want to ask because I don't want to come off as being, you know, desperate or thirsty or whatever, and sure. so in so doing that and like kind of hanging on to a relationship that you're not really sure where it's going or what's happening, in a way, what you're saying to yourself is maybe this isn't really possible. You know, like, I don't want to call it because if I call it, then, you know, I'm going to have to start all over again kind of thing. So when people really feel like, hey, hey, this is the relationship that I want. And I want to know if you're on the same page. I think so many people have trouble really speaking up for like just speaking up for themselves, which I know can be challenging for a lot of people. I know for me in my personal life, 
my friends, both male and female, will come and say, oh, geez, I really like this person, but I don't know where it's going and I don't know how to ask or, oh, God, I just don't know where this is going and I'm not really into it. I don't know how to let them down. So let's say, Grace, let's like come up with a scenario. So let's say that people have been seeing each other for, let's call it three months, right? And at this mm -hmm. point, things have been going really, really well. But scenario number one, you got a person who's really into it, but they want to know where this is heading. Is there any mm -hmm. sort of keywords or phrasing that you find works really nicely for people without being too sort of combative or, um, you know, overly assertive? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think that's a pretty common situation as well. Um, so I think when you're asking the person that you're with the kind of where is it going question, I would say you want to have it you want to come to this conversation as a conversation. This is not like um, an inquisition. You know, you really want to be open to what they have to say and give them the space to maybe disagree with you on this. Mm -hmm. um, but some a simple language would be something like, I really enjoyed spending the last few months with you. I think we have a lot in common. We have a lot of fun. Um, I'm kind of in a space right now where I would really like to have a relationship and you know, we're just getting to know each other and all this, but I, I just want to know if we're on the same page. Once people have that conversation, you know, and even if it's, it, even though if the response is like, yeah, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, but I'm really open to seeing where this goes mm -hmm. at the three month mark might be enough for both people to feel really engaged. Now, if mm -hmm. the other person says, you know, I really don't know, and I, I'm not really sure I can give you what you want. Well, then that's like, you know, you you found out what you need to know at three months and then you can right. make a decision about what exactly. you want to do. Okay. Say, I mean, I've had this happen to me. You know, I was dating when I first moved to New York City. I was dating this really great guy. But I noticed like right around the two and a half month mark. I made a joke and it was something related to food. Like it was so light, but he didn't take it well like he got really mm. hot about it and it was very mm. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was but it was very very silly and then I sort of noticed after that that like you know maybe we'd be watching a movie and I'd laugh at a certain part and he'd be like why do you think that's funny so long story short I started to realize that even though he was thoughtful and good looking and driven and communicative and just like gorgeous <laughs> if we can't laugh at the same things mm -hmm. and if he's getting offended by every little thing because I do have a very dry sense of humor um I don't really think that's someone that I could be with and I really struggled with how to break things off with him partially because he was such a catch and I didn't want to let him go but also right. partially because I didn't really know what to say I didn't I was so worried about making him feel bad or insecure or you know so um <clears throat> when you're in a situation like that how do you recommend people maybe bring that up and go about having that conversation, but also really sticking to their guns, for lack of a better term, and not caving just because you don't want to have, a, you know, an awkward tension in the air? Yeah, I mean, I think your example is really great because there's, you know, there was a lot, there were a lot of conflicting emotions in your in your scenario so you had a guy that was really great on paper but then when you actually spent time together and you as you were getting to know him you were picking up on things that in the long term would not be livable or it was not what you wanted and you didn't really feel that comfort um and so you know when you're in this situation and once you realize it I think you need to really check in with yourself and like you said kind of hold yourself to the standard of, you know, it's funny because people say, oh, I'm not lowering my standards or whatever. And, you know, a lot of times what they're talking about is actually like looks and money. But but really the standard that you had for yourself in that situation was you wanted someone to be able to appreciate who you were and what you found was funny and to feel like understood and at ease with your partner. And so you were holding that standard. Now, yeah. In terms of like what to say, I think it's sort of along the same lines. So it could be something like, <laughs> hey, you know, I've really enjoyed spending these last three months together. We've gotten to know each other, but I think there are just some things that aren't working out for me and I don't want to waste anyone's time. I'm really in a space where I'm looking for a relationship and 
I just don't think this is working out. Just take the Band-Aid off, you know? I mean, give it to somebody straight in, in an empathetic, sympathetic way that respects what you guys have had together um, not in an accusatory way. I don't want to be, sure. you know, like my jokes or whatever it was. <laughs> but rather just but, say, hey, you know what? Yeah, yeah, this is how I want to spend my time. And this is how I, you know, enjoy my downtime. And I think there's, you know, maybe some things that we just don't have in common. And that stuff's important to me. Um, okay, I have a question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that, and Adriana and I are already like giggling and looking at each other because <laughs> we're both guilty of this. Uh-oh. So, you know, you you're you're seeing someone and sex is great rest of the relationship maybe there's parts of it that are great parts of it that aren't so you break things off you one of you finally gets the courage to say hey this isn't what i want but then after just a few weeks you guys start sleeping together again and it's yeah. very much like you know one person might be thinking oh geez maybe this means they want to get back together and the other person's like no this is just physical uh how like why does that happen and how can we break that cycle because i know that 99.999 percent of our listeners are all guilty Mm. of that Mm. yeah no i mean it's it's definitely tempting especially as it gets colder outside um but um no i mean hey it happens to all of us and i i think that you just have to i mean i don't have an agenda for anybody and if if you know what someone wants to do is sleep with their ex, that's fine. But the consequence of it is this. If someone is coming to me and saying, hey, Grace, like, I really want to be in a serious relationship. I can't believe I haven't found the guy that I wanted or the girl that I wanted and all this stuff. I mean, we need to be accountable for how we spend our time and the energy that we that we put out there. So it's more about being comfortable with the fact that by going on all of these side tracks or whatever, by going down these dead end roads, um, the consequence of that is you're not spending time trying to get what you really want. And we're all adults. And so if that's, you know, if that's what you want to do, then own it. Okay. So from a psychological standpoint, what is it that makes us want to sleep with our exes over and over again? And over and over. Knowing that, (laughs) well, I also want to add, knowing that it's probably not going to work out. Right. It's not a fit, but like the the penis and the the vagina's a fit (laughs) or the penis and the penis. Or the vagina and the vagina is a pit. <laughs> Every hole is a goal. Every hole is a goal. <laughs> Sorry, Grace. A perfect match. No, I get it. I mean, I think. So why? I mean, why? I guess it's because it's, you know, it's familiar. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to say goodbye to somebody, even if you didn't really like them that much. I think that if you're with somebody for a while and that connection is lost and they're still willing to entertain sleeping with you, then it's, it's easy. I mean, it's easy. It's comfortable. It's predictable. It might not be what you want, but at least it won't be what you want in the way that you know, (laughs) and it's already failed. So there isn't any big risk in trying again. So I used to consider myself a serial dater. And when I say serial dater, I mean, there was a summer where I went out on probably four dates a week, maybe even five, one every single day. Um, So I just wanted to know, what do you think is a healthy limit to dating? Like, is it too much to do five dates a week with five different people? Or is it better to just scatter them out? Um, You know, there isn't really a right answer to that question. I think it's more about, you know, if you're going on five dates or four dates a week, I guess my question would be, how much attention are you giving to each of these dates? And what's your filtering? How are you filtering the people that you're meeting? Because if you're really focused on what you want and who you are and what's important to you, it's unlikely that, you know, five dates a week over three months, like all of those people match your criteria. And Mm -hmm. so... So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's I don't want to tell someone they should only go on one date a week, one date a month or one date a year. Um, It's more about saying, okay, well, these are the things that are actually really important to me. And I'm going to go online or whatever it is. 
and match with people and have conversations with them. And as I'm getting to know them, then, you know, I might need to know this much information to go on a, a date with them. But you can't, Got it. I don't know, if you're going into this to like explore and stuff, that's cool. But if you're going into it to find a relationship, then it's just very unlikely that you would need to go on so many dates if you're, if you know what you want, you're screening appropriately. Okay. I have a question. Something that I've noticed, I mean, I am literally Charlotte from Sex and the City. Like I've just been dating since I was 15. Where the hell is he? Like, you know, so what I've noticed, and I want to know if this is like a real thing or if this is just my experience. So my parents have been married for about 578 years and they are just the best of friends. They have a wonderful group of friends. Uh, We have family and that's something that I grew up with. They're also both uh, small business owners and they had a very egalitarian relationship. So anything that was done for me as their child or in and around our household was not defined by gender. It was not defined by, it was just everyone pulled weight where they needed to pull weight. And I have found that um, I have a really hard time in some instances, sorry, in most instances, I'll be honest, dating men that don't have that, that didn't grow up with that, that, you know, their parents went through a divorce and, um, you know, either now maybe they do still talk or maybe they don't talk, whatever it may be. So the point that I'm trying to make is I found that even though, you know, this guy over here might be six foot two with a beard and he's not my physical type really but if we were raised the same way I really like him and I almost overlook sort of the the physical aspect of of him or um you know this guy over here could be a complete and utter asshole but if he had a very similar upbringing like I might overlook that and want to sort of and I kind of gravitate towards him so do you find in your experience that it is some ca- in some cases more successful for people to date other people who were raised in a similar way? Or does that not really play into it at all and I'm just a freak? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think of course it does. It's like a similarity in values and culture and expectations. And so in your story, your family um, had a certain set of values that really has shaped who you are and what's important to you and so you know as you're if you're single and going out and into the dating environment what we would do is really talk more about that so what does that mean to you you know having this type of family background having these types of values and then really in the dating space what are some what are some questions and ways that you can find out if you have that in common with the person that you're dating And, you know, the looks versus values versus whatever, like people come in their in their package and their unique package of whatever pluses and minuses or whatever you call it. But if that's a really if that's a leading quality and that's something that you really need to have in a partner as opposed to something that you'd like to have in a partner, then we would encourage you to maybe get out of your comfort zone a little bit in terms of dating and really focus Mm -hmm. on that as opposed to what a lot of people do focus on, which might be looks or career or age, sure. that kind of thing. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned sort of what you're comfortable with and that boundary, because something that we addressed on a previous episode in season one of Dicks and Politics was trusting your instincts. And when you're starting to feel squirmy, you know, with the person that you're either on a date with or dating, get out. Trust your instincts because you're probably right. Grace, would you agree with that? That when someone starts to sort of feel uneasy or uncomfortable, and I mean this in in the most sort of benign way possible. I'm not talking about when yeah. someone is coming at you and screaming. I'm just talking about <laughs> sort of those nuanced moments, you know, where maybe you're walking mm-hmm. down the street and you suddenly just get a weird gut feeling or you're out to dinner and you you kind of get a ping of, of a little bit of doubt. I guess my question, better put, is are those momentary feelings of doubt uh, normal or is that truly a sign that something isn't syncing up and you should probably find a nice way to exit (laughs) um i think they're normal 
I think those, I think anxiety and insecurity and wondering and not being sure is completely normal in almost every early stage relationship. Okay. And so I think it's important not to just like jump when, I mean, it's important to figure out what's going on, but it's definitely worthwhile to just sit with that anxiety a little bit and figure out what's causing it. So it might genuinely be like in your case, when your boyfriend was making you feel uncomfortable about the things you were laughing at, like that was Mm -hmm. something more intrinsic and identifiable, but you may, you know, and we've had cases with clients where they just have anxiety around being in a relationship full stop. Yeah. (laughs) And so every time something just starts to get a little bit serious, they have this like pit in the stomach, you know, it's fine if it's like maybe once or twice, but if you've done that, you know, 20 times and you still want to have a real relationship, then it's important to pause and just figure out what's going on. Because if a person keeps running into the same block, there's no reason why they won't keep running into the same block unless they address exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And we completely agree with that. And I think it's it's so frustrating because a lot of the experiences I've had, and Adriana and I have talked about this, I mean, we've talked about it with all of our girlfriends, like, we're dating a guy, we think everything is great. They then cut things off and then it's like, I mean, actually, <laughs> I guess I can reveal. So in the episode that's going to air, I guess after this one, or no, sorry, it'll be episode, what, 14, I guess? Um, we're going to air an interview with this guy, Mike, that I met here in New York City on a dating app. We hit it off and then we didn't. But we decided to stay friends. And it was interesting because during his interview, he was like, it's not that I didn't like you. It's not that I didn't think you were gorgeous and literally everything that I wanted and everything I was looking for. It's just that I wasn't ready. But I didn't know how to say that. You know, so I Mm -hmm. think that that goes back to your original suggestion. And that's really getting to know yourself Mm -hmm. before you start to, you know, think too seriously about dating not that you shouldn't take it seriously but I think there's really something to be said for getting to know who you are what you want accepting that that might change over the years and sort of finding that balance of all right well this is kind of my steady this is my 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 median I guess and Mm -hmm. who do I want what fits into this so Grace I want to thank you so much for joining us this was just so great and I hope you'll come back (laughs) Oh, of course. <laughs> if you like the way this fun. sounds, I hope no, you'll come totally. back um, because it's it's always interesting to hear from other people and especially an expert like yourself. So one more time, the name of Grace's company is A Good First Date. They are based here in New York City, and it is Grace and her partner, Rachel. And we will be posting all about this on social media. You guys can go to their website. Um, It'll be all over our Instagram. So please do check them out. Grace, thank you again for your time and your thoughtfulness uh, that you put into this. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to have you back. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to Dicks and Politics. Digestible and unfiltered content about men, money, and moments. New episodes every Wednesday. Don't forget to subscribe.